called this particular um, Dr. Jalak topic royal blooded because in the last two years uh, I have been working with scientists and understanding just the amount of information uh, that uh, we can learn about the body and, uh, through uh, what, what's in the blood. And um, I just want to reason a few things with you because, you know, I, sometimes my friends that I grew up with or some, some guy in the gym will say, hey, I saw your, your, your the research that you're doing and, and I, I'm not quite sure I get it all. You know, and so I, I was sitting with this uh, uh, guy the other day and I was talking to him at, at the gym and I wanted to just see if I could try something out with him and reason with him about just a host of things we can learn about the body uh, when you look at the blood and, and many of us know that you can go and get all kinds of blood tests and in those blood tests you can determine normal values and those normal values are basically based on you know studying what's average and normal in human beings and and that curve that well, it's called the bell cor curve or the z curve the the, the highest point uh, uh, the peak of that curve uh yeah, straight down is probably the largest sample of a population so as the as the bell curve moves to the right or to the left, the, the, you know, the, it moves closer and closer to a baseline. And so the majority of the values that we look at in blood, whether we're looking at cholesterol, whether we're looking at iron, whether we're looking at DHEA, whatever we're looking at, uh, hormones, um, we're studying it based on what's average and normal in human beings. And, and, and that's pretty much worked really well because we can diagnose different conditions by looking at the information that's in the blood. So I want to reason with you uh, uh, a little bit here because I want to finish with some of the discoveries that we are finding in this blood that tends to be filled with a lot of different information and, and it's royal blood, it's, it's, a, it's a blood that's more holy, it's more whole. So let's reason if you are if you are exposed to the same information in your life, if you are exposed to the same predictable world and the way you see things based on knowns, that through your senses, the information that you're gathering through your senses, um, for the most part, is going to be translated somehow in your blood. And there are certain things that are under the autonomic nervous system that are regulated and kept in balance. and and so the body stays in homeostasis and, and that information that the person's getting uh, is coming from their senses and in time blood can actually become programmed. It could be uh, 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 more automatic or stay at a certain state and uh, it can be programmed with information. So if you think the same thoughts based on the same information that you know that you uh, receive from whatever source or from whatever experience in your life, uh, as long as you think the same thoughts, uh, your blood chemistry is going to stay the same. And if you have a lot of people thinking similar thoughts, their blood will be the same as well. And you can remember on a daily basis, you know, all of the same memories of your past that we really literally keep alive uh, with our awareness and we fire the same circuitry uh, in the exact same ways and we're reproducing a same mind and that that memory of the past has an emotion associated with it and the brain is signaling another part of the brain to make the corresponding emotions that are consistent with that memory and and it's that emotion that is the end product of an experience in the environment that causes the body to believe it's in the past experience uh, and if the environment signals the gene and, uh, and the end product of an experience uh, is an emotion then it makes sense then that if you're signaling the same exact uh, genes in the very exact same way on some level you're programming genes and you're headed uh, to that genetic destiny so as long as we live by the same emotions the more the body's believing it's so objective it's the unconscious mind it's 
it's, it's, it's believing it's in that same environment and you can condition the blood with the same information and that blood will look the same because the person is in that same environment. An environment has a huge, a huge influence, but the outer environment of the cell is the inner environment of the body. And so the emotions are really selecting and instructing certain genes. Now, if you throw in the survival emotions and, and those survival emotions tends to cause us to think negatively, I'll just use that loosely. Um, and, and emotions are the end product of experience and, and, and you're living by the same emotions and you're programming the same genes and the person now is living in fear or anger or frustration or impatience or resentment or entitlement or control or competition. If everybody's doing that and living by those same survival emotions, uh, their blood will be, you know, will find normals that will, uh, or will start seeing certain people move out of balance uh, and out of order because those genes that are getting selected and instructed over time are down regulating uh, a gene to make a different protein and you can program the body for disease and that's why disease becomes almost like a subconscious program and the body is now um, out, of, out of balance it's, it's, it's out of its baseline it's, it's, it's out of homeostasis and, and, and so the long term effects of this and keep knocking the body out of balance and, and that disease that's created is a lack of resource of energy in the body and so as we tend to progress in our lives uh, it seems like it takes longer for the body to get back into balance and if your negative thinking becomes addictive and and we've all done this and we've all done this and we our, our thoughts actually start causing the same arousal in the body and we get frustrated we get impatient we get angry we get all those emotions and our thought is now doing it. We're doing that by thought alone. So if you keep reproducing the same habitual actions in your life, you keep doing the same things, behavior dependent genes get signaled and for the most part um, you're doing the same thing the next day as you did the day before and, and those genes will, behavior dependent genes will, will stay the same and the information that's carried in the blood uh, is actually what's programming the gene. So it would make sense then that if that same behavior leads to a redundant experience that you look forward to in your life and there are experience dependent genes, the blood is somehow signaling those same experience dependent genes and the blood is programmed in a certain way. The gene becomes programmed in a certain way because the information is being carried in the blood and now the person is programmed to stay the same. And so then you can see then that the long-term effects of doing this over and over again, the information in the blood could cause the blood to move out of normal balance uh, based on, you know, collective, uh, uh, you know, collective group of people. So when we started doing our research and we started saying, okay, this concept of being able to make your inner world more real than your outer world, and that takes quite a bit of practice to, to get your brain to work at that level, is going to require new information. Okay, so if you have new information, and we found out that if you teach people new information, they'll have new thoughts, and, and those new thoughts will cause them to think in new ways. And when you get new information, you become conscious of something new that you are unconscious of. And when you become aware of something, the moment you become aware, you're no longer unaware. And if you're aware now, instead of unaware, you're aware of another possibility that exists that you were unaware of. And that's what information does, new information. And if that information is based on science and it's based on facts and it's based on knowledge that's uh, tried and true and, and, it, and it's the latest and greatest, um, every thought has a frequency and every thought then produces an energy or a chemistry and it affects our field and it affects our biology and uh, we become more filled with light we're enlightened by knowledge and and if you're unaware of a new possibility because you're consuming the same information more than likely 
you're thinking the same way and you're gonna make the same choice and you do the same thing and you're gonna live by the same routine experiences and, and habits and feel the same feelings every day. And, and um, that over time, when uninformed people um, that, that are not exposed to information, they, they are programmed then on some level to accept information, to believe in that information, to surrender to the information as if that information was the truth without analyzing it. And that information somehow gets programmed for people to make similar choices and they, they become habituated, they get programmed. So the new information then that the person is learning is not enough to just learn it. They have to be present with it, they have to pay attention to it, and they have to integrate it into their nervous system by remembering it. Okay, so now you teach a person a bit of information and you, may, you do your best to make it unintimidating in a certain way. And they can teach back that information uh, to a person. They can explain it. If they can't explain it, it's not wired in their brain, but the act of reminding themselves about that information and reproducing the same level of mind, as I've said numerous times, is changing the brain biologically. It's upscaling its, its raw materials uh, because now it's, 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 it's learning new information. And learning, I don't know about it anymore now, but learning is the reward in and of itself. The reward centers in the brain when we learn new information, we discover new things causes us to get excited about or feel good about it. And so if, if, if it's presented in the right way and the person is creating a new mind, then collective networks of neurons in the brain start firing in new ways. And that, that process is a building of a model or an understanding. And the understanding is so important because it allows us to not only see those possibilities that, how they exist or now that we're aware of them we may actually want to experience them then then the only way that that knowledge is going to be truly um, instrumental in an experience is that if you can demystify what you're doing and learning that knowledge what it's for and why well, you understand the why behind it then the application then the how turns on the prefrontal cortex and the prefrontal cortex is that part of the brain that puts meaning behind things. And when you signal that prefrontal cortex, you have more value. It's, it, it is more instrumental. You have now an intention to do something with it, or, or you have an intention to experience that knowledge. This is how we're wired. So what we discovered when we started doing this work is that if the person couldn't explain that, information it wasn't wired in their brain and they would have more conjecture more superstition more doubt uh, they would rely on on old information and somehow really wouldn't set themselves up for the experience but if they could articulate it very clearly uh, and then we could give them an opportunity to experience it and, and set up the conditions where they weren't in survival and they were the community of people and they felt safe and secure and they were willing to go inward and there were they could, they could understand the process of what they'd have to do and stop doing and understand that process more completely. When the prefrontal cortex turns on um, and they assign meaning to the act, to the, to the action, or to make a new choice to, 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 to engage in an experience if they were able to do that properly. Uh, and we could demystify you know, things like brain coherence and hard coherence. And if this quantum field truly exists, um, if we're unaware of it, it doesn't exist for us. But the moment the idea of that there's a field of infinite possibilities, that's energy, that has nothing to do with matter. If you eliminate all the matter and, and you, you even take away, you know, the light that's in, in, the, in the room and take away all the matter, you're left with pretty much nothing, right? So if we put our attention on that that nothing and, and a person understands that there's frequency and energy there and they understand how to change their brain waves and get out of those high beta states that the brain normally is in for all of us when we're, we're in survival. If we could really begin to practice getting beyond the identity that it identifies with the information in the outer environment and really practice uh, you know, elevating our emotional states and understanding that if we could create hard coherence 
would create more order in the autonomic nervous system and it would begin to help our brain to work better and become more creative. And we built this model and get a group of people together. Um, if they put enough of attention on that energy and less attention on them and they surrendered to it as if well, just because they didn't see it, it didn't mean it wasn't real, they just were unaware of it and they became more aware of it and less aware of them and slowed down their brain to a certain wavelength frequency. And we've talked about this in previous teleclasses. The interaction when that thinking analytical uh, database of knowledge and information called the neocortex, that repository of, of information that's known to you is, is settled down. And you can be in a state of dreaming, that theta state where there's rapid eye movement and you know, your, your body's starting to feel safe enough to be in that place. That's a very hypnotic and suggestible place. So when we started seeing people connect to this energy, when they were able to stay in that theta state, they were suggestible to information. But the information not coming from their senses uh, was coming from an entrainment resonance that was taking place between that energetic field and the person's autonomic nervous system that the interaction of oscillating frequencies began to build standing waves of energy in the brain that started to build on each other and waves started carrying waves and theta started uh, carrying ga uh, alpha and alpha started to carry beta into high beta all the way into gamma and as we've talked about in the, in the past that arousal is a, a feeling of connection it's a feeling like um, you're, you're, you're no longer um, uh, separate. You know, on some level, you feel connected to something really big, and you can feel it, in, in for the most part, in every single cell of your body. Uh, in that kind of state, but that's where we started looking at these wonderful changes uh, when people hit these moments. Now, we also noticed that when certain people sustained, say, a theta state uh, in their brain, there's a lot of... Um, DNA replication and repair that goes on in that state. Uh, the body's the body's regenerating quite a bit in that state, and so we saw that that people that were sustaining those states that were advanced meditators had some really profound effects as well. So when we started looking at these people that had more order in their nervous system, in their heart, and their brain, when we started looking at the blood, the information that we uncovered in that blood showed a profound effect on the biology of the cell. So now the new information that was no longer coming from the person's senses, but were coming from frequency, and frequency is literally carrying the information. And latent systems in the autonomic nervous system will connect to that information like a radio receiver and broadcast an image uh, uh, to the, into the brain uh, uh, and that person is, is feeling whatever that feeling is. The information that's in the blood started to show us that it was not normal. They, the person was the new information on some level that was being carried in the blood. Uh, uh, it, it was beginning to affect the cell to begin to flourish in ways that showed that the person was in a new environment uh, and they were programming their genes and the metabolites and derivatives from not only the, the cell but the blood and how the cell would signal other cells in the body suggest then that the person's biology is no longer in the same environment they're in a new environment and if the environment signals the gene and the end product of an experience in the environment is an emotion, as we said earlier, then we're signaling genes in the body outside of the known environment that the person is living in. And, and the information that's carried on the blood is selecting and instructing those genes in really, really favorable ways. So when we did the live stream and we saw wow, there's an immunity, a great, the person's blood is no longer a match to 
the same information in the environment. In fact, their blood is showing that they're in a different environment, even though they're in the same environment. Their body is, uh, the response to the environment is no longer weakening the organism. In fact, their interaction with energy shows them on some level that there's an upgrade in their biology and their body is actually greater than the conditions in the environment. And when we started looking at the blood and seeing all of these wonderful metabolites uh, that showed that the body was literally, literally changing biologically and believing it was in a different environment and people are sitting in a ballroom uh, and there's not a whole lot of action taking place in a ballroom, especially when your eyes are closed, that the majority of, a, of an event is the inward process. And even if people practiced it every day and didn't have those really profound transcendental moments, even if they practiced it on a daily basis and they went all in, the data suggests that their bodies were changing in such rapid ways in one week that they started looking like they had been meditating for more than six months at a time. So by capturing that blood and starting to look to see what is it in the blood, that's, what are the factors in the blood that's causing that immunity? The blood now is, is more holy, it's more whole, it's, it's got greater order, it's got greater chemistry, it's got greater resilience, uh, it has information in it that is literally upregulating genes and, and this helps us to understand that uh, to a greater degree why uh, certain people with immune mediated conditions uh, if they do the work even if they don't think they're changing in the process if they keep showing up and they keep doing it uh, we found out that yeah more than likely they'll they'll have some very significant changes and those people that practice opening their heart every day, uh, me included, um, even when it's hard, um, and we practice that, that the data suggests that in between events, in between events, not during the event, that if we check a person and then they came back six months later to another event and we compare their heart rate variability, uh, th their heart is functioning to a much greater degree just by we know that person's doing the work and and yeah yeah it's a it's a it's a process uh and it's long uh to get good at it but but again we're working at doing it with uh we're getting so good at it with our eyes closed we want to do it with our eyes open and be able to self-regulate no matter what and, and get back in our hearts that's 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 the work that we found that tends to be uh, the most important because you could have a great meditation uh, in one hour uh, at the beginning of your day and spend the rest of the day remembering your past and trying to predict the future and living by the same habits and making the same choices and reacting emotionally in the same ways and uh, it makes sense then you're going back to the same person and the information in your blood will very easily be different and begin to program the biology of the cell in the same exact way so then so then if you take that blood and you start looking at how it interacts with cancer cells, and this is where our research will be going in the next a year or so here, somehow whatever is in that blood tends to cause the chaos of the cancer cell, the immortality of the cancer cell, uh, to no longer have uh, the same amount of energy, that the cells all of a sudden dial way down. And that explains why this blood that tends to be more royal, uh, uh, it, it, it explains why a lot of people with uh, cancers and, and other serious health conditions, chronic health conditions, heal either uh, in time or in a, in a very short amount of time. And if it helps to create more robust energy in the blood, and that somehow interacts with the genes in the brain that are related to Alzheimer's or cognitive decline, somehow that gene tends to downregulate as well. And so we find these proteins that are being made by the cells that, that really protect the cells. Uh, they protect the cells uh, from the environment. Uh, and and, and uh, uh, 
The opposite is also true, that is the effects that we experience in our lives, you know, how we feel and how we think related to certain experiences or conditions in our world. Um, the, the, the weakening of our biology uh, it, by responding by the stress hormones then causes us more, to be more vulnerable or more victimized by the environment, then the opposite would also be true, that a person who really did self-regulate, and we have data to show that a person with, with a very, very serious health condition that probably, according to what's normal, would never go away. In her walking meditation, we saw her three times in a row while she was in her walking meditation go into beautiful heart coherence. Now, what's the significance of that? The body's in believing it's living in a whole new world, a whole new reality. And the coherence that's taking place in the heart, of course, of causing the autonomic nervous system to move back into balance. And the heart then informs the brain, hey, I'm back again, there's energy here to create, and it informs the brain to go into a, a state of dreaming, a state of alpha, a state of imagination, a state of possibility. Oh, what was it that I would love to experience now? And then the thought she becomes aware of that is that she can actually heal. Why? Because that emotion is connecting her to, that's a new energy. And that's a, that's a new energy is a new thought, a new frequency. And so she becomes aware of that possibility as a possibility that she could actually accept, believe, and surrender to without any analysis as the truth. And that's what begins the healing process right there. That information makes it all the way through into our biology and into our blood. And so then the person has a very profound experience and gets an upgrade from information from the field. So our interest in, in publishing this research is to give people the understanding of new possibilities. And, you know, for so long, um, uh, you know, people would consider information like this as pseudoscience. And I can now say with quite a bit of certainty um, that it's actually real science now. And that we have this innate capacity uh, to heal uh, when we are in that kind of balance. And so, our interest is to provide the information uh, to the world uh, without, without having it be cited in one way or the other that people are healing on their own. And people are changing chronic health conditions on a regular basis. That people are having profound mystical experiences that change the way they see themselves uh, and somehow that interaction, that information that the brain has experienced as imagery or as a profound feeling, somehow their interaction, they become it on some level and uh, it becomes them. And so it's happening in the world now and what we want to do is demystify that process so that a collective group of people, um, by gathering this information, by remembering it, by committing their understanding to it, by the constant application of it over and over again, to always continue to rebuild the model in some way and integrate it and learn more information so you can assign more meaning to what you do and, and to check what what you can improve on and rehearse how you're going to improve your next meditation. And think about what you did really well and before you do your meditation and remind yourself what you're going to do. And, and, and that, that is such an important element of the, the, the rigor of what it takes to become uh, the experience. And we got to get so lost in the act that somehow the act creates the experience. And, and we have enough people now uh, that have had uh, wonderful, wonderful changes, and and some of the testimonials uh, just in the last uh, two week-long events have changed me on on so many levels because I, I learned so much from this information from other people and in in their own words and the way they described their own experiences. It was such a profound truth for us to remember um, 
uh, what it takes to 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 uh, to be the example and to actually live it. And and these people really really had to keep over and over again <clears throat> going at it and remembering. They had to keep <clears throat> doing their work sometimes twice a day if they if they couldn't find their way back to the balance. It was on a lot of levels their medicine. And so we have such a wonderful interaction now, such a marriage between the science of what we're discovering and the brain science, of course, is a whole nother story, but I can tell you that huh, there are dramatic dr brain changes that happen for a lot of people. That's a new mind. Uh, the amount of coherence and order that we're seeing in the brain is off the scale. Um, uh, we're seeing people change their brains in, in seven days to look like the, the look, look completely different. Uh, the amount of data that we have with people sustaining heart coherence and then all the uh, epigenetic changes that we're studying, all the exosomal changes we're seeing in the blood uh, is demystifying that process and the marriage between the experience of, of philosophy and information and the science that actually supports it. It is our hope uh, that we empower people uh, to the application of it, to, 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 um, to become it, you know, to become whatever it is that they, they want to become. And, and uh, our data is uh, so compelling at this point uh, that, that any scientist that, that we show it to really, uh, that really wants to, to, to listen and to pay attention uh, really has a, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful comments about the, how, what, to what great, great measures we have gone through uh, to be able to show people that they are, in fact, greater than they think, uh, more powerful than they know, and more unlimited than they, they could ever dream. And um, we'll continue doing the research. We have studies planned uh, for our next week-long event in the United States. Uh, and we're going to bring in all kinds of new things. Uh, the, the Marco Island event was one of the large. It is the largest study on meditation that has ever been done, and it's been done on our community. And our community, those people that participated, are going to be part of history. Uh, and um, you know, again, gathering it information from other in, in other ways is also important for us. Uh, so we'll continue doing the research. Uh, and they're so, uh, our, our community is so compliant. You know, the scientists say, God, we've never been in a study like this where people are so willing to, to, to be in the study. You know, most people drop out of the study or it takes two years to just get people to, uh, to get a full group and, and to, to set it up. And, uh, you know, our, our community is just so willing and, and it's really wonderful because uh, each and every one of the people that participate are you. On some level, they're, they're no different than you and I. And, um, and, and so think about that royal blood uh, when you sit down to do the work because new thoughts and new choices, even though sometimes it's hard to make new choices, uh, 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 new acts, new behaviors, new experiences, uh, new, new emotions that are created uh, by you uh, on a regular basis uh, does have profound effects uh, on your genetic future. It enhances your vitality, supports your breathing and balances your immune system. It can also reduce fever. It is best to hold it all the time while listening to the talk or enjoying the meditation. Hold Madra with one or both hands. Clench hand into fist. Place index finger on thumb joint. <laughs> 